Good morning, afternoon, day, whatever time it might be for you guys. I'm your host, Savannah Man Buck. I got to welcome you guys to the cleanest farm on the internet. This is Farm Sim 22, and we are on the Andy Clean Farm. We're going to get you guys a little overview of what this operation will look like and the story behind it. Then we're going to make our way over to our first cornfield and start ripping some ears. Let's get to it. Now, if you guys have not heard about the world's greatest farm soap yet, then you guys, oh my. Then you guys got to check out my buddy Andy over at Andy Clean. This is a farm that is based off of his what he calls dream farm, but uses the incorporation of his real life equipment, or at least the closest that I'm able to get to it. Starting off with our transportation around the farm, we have three main sources, which I'm going to drive a 2008 Chevrolet Silverado. This has a beautiful service box on the back mixed with the gooseneck and a 6.6 Duramax. Andy's truck is going to be a 97 F350. That sucker is also very beautiful. And then this was a late addition to the farm, but it is the XUV865R. I put in a different steering wheel because I found out that somebody also made it where you can get the tan interior in one of these. So that was very enlightening. And at Farm Progress, I actually got to look at all the field mapping that they are starting to come out with these gators. So you can do all your field boundaries and make it so it's a lot easier on the combine and the planter. Moving into the main machine shed, we have a 6155M, nice little 72 inch riding zero turn Z track, a 7088. Now, this is Andy's actual combine, and he does have an eight row Gearinghoff corn header for it. So, this is as true as it's going to get to Andy's farm. You have the three tractors, one of which he does own, and two of them that he would absolutely aspire to own a 4960. He does not own that, nor does he own the 8410 but he does own the 8120. Moving on to the semis, our grain transport, we have my 4900 Lomax Western Star in a deer configuration, green fenders, white paint, and a Freightliner cab over with a Wilson pace setter and a Tempty Super Hopper is actually what's on the Western Star. We have a propane truck for our propane dryer, a 4020 with a three point mounted mower just to clean up the ditches, and an STX 275 Steiger. He recently purchased this. It actually has big singles on it, but he likes the row crop duels. So we're going to be using this as our main tillage tractor. A 4030 that I can't remember. A 4430 that I can't remember exactly. I think he uses it to pull the sprayer. I'm not going to lie in farm sim. This thing has the most gutless powertrain in the entirety. I can, I can hardly stand it driving sometimes. This one's a little different though. A 9650. It's the Walker Combine right before the STS. And the most important piece on the farm, the pressure washer. We don't have any water, fuel, or soap in it, but we are definitely stacked up on our Andy Clean soap. Heading outside, we have our two header trailers that you guys obviously saw were causing problems, so I just took the headers off the trailers. Our gooseneck, really cheap low boy, a 606C corn header. We have a 16 row 1770 NT that does run fertilizer. His runs dry. This one has to run liquid and a V800. Now, his is a 753, I believe, Brent auger wagon, but the V800 is the closest I'm able to find to his, and a Thunder Creek fuel trailer. Tillage is a 712 deer field mulcher. That one is not on his farm, but I wanted something to be able to rip up ground in case I needed to, and a 335 vertical till case tillage tool. That is what is usually going to be pulled behind that 275. Taking the gator down to the old antique rustic barn, we'll be able to check out our spraying system and some of our older transporting things that we're going to use to get grain from the grain leg to our grain dryer and back. Heading inside the spray shed, we have a hardy navigator. Now his is a 750 commander, but this is the closest we're going to be able to get without complaining. In the barn, though, we do have our uh, spray tank system. Don't mind the fact that tank's going right through a support beam and an international straight truck. Then on the opposite side of the white barn, we do have our Diamond C skid steer trailer, as I'd like to call it. But there is an older silo, so for some odd reason, if we need to store more grain, we can still use this operable bin. Another fuel tank, just the old stuff on the farm. This is the old part of the farm. Old school style Sears farmhouse. And before we go and check out the main grain leg, I do want to run up quick and look at our old bin sites. If you guys do find that you like farming content and you'd love to see more FS22 and 25 soon to be videos coming on the channel, be sure to possibly like and share, subscribe down below. 
I'm trying to reach that 100K by the end of the year. And I think with the boom season just now getting into play, we're going to have a great chance at that. But we have five Roscoe bins. I don't remember the capacity of these exactly. But the main reason that I would be coming out here is this brand new souk up dryer bin. I don't have the grain auger set up to it right now. I probably should. I haven't gotten any moisture samples as to how wet the corn is, but that dryer will come in handy definitely later on using the propane truck to go and fill that up. Now heading to the main grain bin site, we'll take a peeky weeky at that. And then we will get on our way in the Gearinghofen case to start cutting into some corn. At first glance, he thought it was just the grain leg, but we actually do have a moisture sampler at the farm to help optimize and know what we're going to be bringing in right from the get-go. Our trucks will drive up on the ramp. The probe will drop right into the back halves of the hopper and give us a moisture reading. So that way, when we're putting it into our massive grain leg, we know if we need to send it to our dryer in-house. Sadly, this dryer does not actually work. That's why we have the one sitting on the south side of the farm. Then that can be distributed into our massive bin site. Afterwards, we will then take that into market. Prove me wrong, one of the best things about like eight row and smaller corn heads and technically 20 to 25 stretching at bean heads is that you never really have to take them off of the combine. You can just leave them on because they can drive on the road. I did have to do some modifications to this 7088 because it is in the Giants mod hub, but it's only made with uh, European style markers. I just went into the 250 series axial flow and pulled the flashers off. So it is an American version now. Our corn ground, however, I don't remember which field. It's kind of difficult because I own a good portion of the map on Westby. The thing about Westby, though, is that a lot of the ground on this map is strip farming. And this is like one of the bigger plots. that's just actual land. They're not strip farms. With everything set, let's cut a little bit of a field opening, bring down one of our trucks, and we'll get on our way. You can't turn the tide Let the water go where it wants to go Thanks to Daryl for coming out and helping. So we'll be finishing off this road, dumping on the truck 80% been holding pretty much steady about that 214 area going up this hill. I could definitely see that the machine is starting to not necessarily struggle, but you could feel the weight of this corn that's sitting in the hopper right now. I would think though, we'd be able to at least get one truckload out of this field. That would be fantastic. I'll show you guys the PDA that way when we do some stream content on this at some point, you guys will be able to understand where we're going to have to go. 
Field 12, 10, and 11 are really going to be some big stream fields. Field 80 is originally where I was going to build this farm, but there was a power line that went through it, and it just didn't look right. This farm builds definitely better. But we have 67, 56, 55, 53, all these fields just... They're strip field farms, so they're not really that big of fields in terms of, like, width and size, but they still have quite a bit of crop that's in them. Nebraska, however, is going to be our largest amount of harvesting that we're going to have because we own almost half the map on that one, and that's a 4X map. At least we have a 16-row header, though, and a 12-row header from deer to work on that ground. Sadly, I cannot bring Andy Clean out to the field unless I bring my pressure washer over, but we'll definitely be keeping this combine and all of the equipment on this farm as spotless as possible. But to make all these videos possible, I haven't done this in a while, but I do want to make a big thank you out to Moza Racing. If you guys haven't checked them out yet, I have actually been running their truck sim steering wheel ever since uh, March, actually. And it has been a fantastic steering wheel. I know you guys have probably been looking at that corn stock going, can you please just go and get it? How dare you forget about it? I didn't. It bothered me too. But Moza has had the truck sim steering wheel sent to me, and I've loved this thing ever since. If you guys are looking to up the ante on seriousness of your wheel sim setups, I highly recommend them. The current steering wheel I'm using right now is not available to console, but Moza does have an option for it, and you guys are paying for quality. It's like trash bags and toilet paper. There are some things you just don't buy cheap. I gotta say though, my favorite part about being the YouTuber that I have become over the last two years is really the people that I've met outside of the computer side. I love working with Jake, I love working with Austin, I love working with all of the guys that have really made this channel possible to what it is, but the networking outside of things with people like Marty from Prairie State, Jordan Van Trump, and Todd from AgSwag, Andy from Andy Clean, I mean, you can't meet better people like this and know them in person. It's you gain that connection through networking, but you know a face to a name. You're not just saying, oh, I'm working with these guys and you don't know who they are. I want you guys to know who I'm working with. I, know to, I want you guys to feel like you are a part of this channel. You are what have built this channel to as far as what it's gotten to. Let's finish up the harvest of this field though and move to another one. I wanna show you guys the strip farming style that is uh, kind of synonymous with this area. There's a lot of hills. Not that many terraces, but you could technically make terrace farming out of this. The nice thing about Andy is that Andy likes all brands, but his farm diversity is between case and deer. So you guys will definitely get some red paint action and some green paint action on any of the content that is on the Andy Queen farm. Plus, this series is supposed to run all the way through the end of 22's lifespan. I don't know exactly how long I'll be still playing 22 once 25 drops, especially for stream content. It's going to be harder to piece together content on 25 than it would just to be playing on five well-established series. So we might bicker back and forth between the two games once it does come out, as we have a lot of work to do on both games. With that wrapped up, there's one person in the comments specifically, though, that I need to, head to have them go down and say something. Andy, if you're watching and listening, which I know you probably are, I want you to go down and tell your story and let people know who you are. Your face has now become synonymous with this channel and the farm sim community as a whole. You've already built your presence on Twitter and Facebook, but I want you to be known on all these platforms. People love you, man. You're an awesome guy and I love working with you. So let the community know who you are. I'll pin your comment. I hope someday you guys will be able to meet Andy at some point. He is really just that good of a friend. I, I really can't say much more about him than that. But I got to start moving to the strip farm, and I think there... Oh, there's one right behind it. I can go to 111. Uh, except that's not ready. What fields are ready that I can go and drive to? Is 85 good? 85 is good. Let's boot scoot and boogie our way over and we'll take out field 85 Then we'll get out the uh, vertical till and start knocking some stocks a few moments later Westby is just such a beautiful map and it honestly has some pretty decent history back into how our group got together It was one of the maps we considered all playing on we have done a series on it for the year series I believe it was the 70s or the 80s with Grant 
This map is very well known with a lot of dairy farmers for FS22. I mean, you don't just have the cheese state labeled for you if you don't have a lot of cows in there. But to all the cattle farmers there in FS22, what is your preferred map? Westby, like I said, I know it's a big one, but I know there's a lot of other great maps. I personally use Griffin, Indiana for mine. I need to sneak that. I need to sneak this building out and place it down so I can run an old, old John Deere dealer somewhere. It's got all like the old memorabilia and other really cool stuff. That's a cool looking shed. For those that do not know, I am not a real life farmer. You're going to notice a lot of things that I do that really go against the grain of how actual farming supposed to happen. And that's all right, because I'm trying to learn. I like to go out and do these things to gain the knowledge that better pursues my source of resources and things that will help are times like this fall. I will be down with the Hilbert brothers working on the farm, whether that's either harvesting or laying drain tile, trying to fix all of that mess on Grant's land. And maybe if I can somehow score it rich with some of the guys back home, I might be helping on some of the local farm grounds around my current area. This field could definitely be expanded upon. I get that this is a dairy farming map, but if I were to do any sort of field work on this and make it a full blown series, I'd tear up stuff like the ground that's right in between these two little fields and make it work all as one big field. Maybe even take out the lot that's to the right of the combine. It just seems like the strip farms are kind of overbearing. But if you're a row crop farmer, it just makes more sense to have more land. But again, this map is based upon dairy, so you got to have a lot of grass for those dairy cows. Ooh, this is going to be close. Come on. Come on. Do it. Block it off. There we go. That'll work. Harvest season is just around the corner and we do have some guys around me already starting to bite in. Silage corn is already somewhat starting to wrap up since we're really turning fast. But this year really has gone a lot faster than I thought it would. It's amazing how time flies when you're either working or having fun. Considering that we're going to jump to tillage, I'm going to do the one thing that needs to be done on this farm the most. Keep the combine clean. Fix, uh... We'll fill up the pressure washer, get ready to go, and we'll clean this combine off. Let's see, we need fuel, we need soap, we need water. Water, check. Fuel, check. Soap, check. All systems go. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. I've had this tractor in my mods folder for probably the, the longest amount of time, and I've never used it. I don't know why, because it actually seems and looks like a really, really good tractor. Just never really had a use for it. Once I start getting into beans, though, I want to take that 712 and expand the field around the bin site. I'll show you on the way out as to why I say that. When I originally constructed the bin site, I couldn't get where I wanted the bins right, and this whole area is just open grass, and that could easily be arable farm ground if I am to clean it up. So that 712 will rip up that whole little area so we can plant it for crop the following season. Wings are unfolded. And using my knowledge that I've learned, we're going to cut across the grain of our stocks. Holy cow, that is a lot of dirt. There we go. That's a little bit better. This is something that I learned not too long ago, that you're not supposed to cut corn stalks. Like, you're not supposed to go run vertical till right over the top of them. You're supposed to take it at a little bit of an angle. It just kind of buries the stalks a little bit better. I don't know. I'm not a farmer. But it does something that produces better results. Gotta say, though, the VT's doing a really good job. It's turning it right to black dirt. Gonna have some stones to pick up, though. Might have to look to get a Degelman of some sorts. I'll work on this for a little bit. And we'll catch you guys towards the end of the episode. 
to the farm thank you guys so much for tuning in to the andy clean farm series i hope you did enjoy it and if you did please consider dropping a like down below i'm gonna wrap my system up for the day you guys have a great one and a better day tomorrow this is the rental man out peace